Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to get a Windows XP in VirtualBox. Before we get started, please vote up in the poll what my next video should be about. Also, please share this video. If you enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, click that subscribe button. Also, if you want to support me, you can donate through the PayPal link in the description. With this being said, the only software that you will need is VirtualBox. The link will be in the description. And if you want to know how to get VMware free, full and legal directly from their website, the link for the video will be in the description. The only file that you will need is this ISO that I uploaded myself to Mediafire and Drive. It's not a malware. And even if the link is shortened with AdFly, please note that I made this because it's easier to organize my description. So it's not a malware. I created the link myself with my own AdFly account because I always get comments if it's a virus or a scam on uh, the videos that I have links short with AdFly. But with this being said, let's get started. So once you open up your VirtualBox or VMware, you want to create a new virtual machine. So once you click the new button, you're going to open this window and you're going to call it whatever you want. I'm going to call this Windows XP video because I already got one. Make sure that selected Windows XP 32-bit and I put in your RAM. I'm going to give it a 1 gigabyte. On the other one, I have two. Click Next. Create Virtual Hard Drive. Click Create. Okay. Uh, select your format and click Next. And you can put it dynamically or fixed. I recommend fixed for best performance. But I'm going to put it dynamically because it's quicker to create. On My virtual machine is on fixed size. But I'm going to delete this anyway. Now you want to put 10 gigs or more. I recommend you about 15 and you can move it, put in another partition. Anyway, I'm not going to move this one because I'm going to delete it. So once you click create and you created everything, you want to click over to the settings button. So once you get into the settings button, it's going to pop up a new window. Over to this window, if you go over to system, you can choose here what you want. Also, you can go into the processor and these are the only settings that you're going to make. But please note that if you put another core, you're going to enable IO AFIC. Anyway, I'm going to put only one CPU, so I'm going to leave it this. Over to display, you can enable these two, it's optional. But if you do, please uh, go ahead and put it in more video RAM. The other settings are okay, so over to the controller IDE, you're going to select our ISO. So I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to get my ISO. It's a shortcut, it's on other partition. Anyway, if you put it with a shortcut, it's going to recognize it. So click OK and it's going to save your settings. Now all you need to do is click the start button and we are ready to install Windows XP. Well, now it's going to start for the first time. It's going to be a little slower. Anyway, I'm going to maximize this, but I got to wait for the virtual machine to completely start. Okay, so now it's going to start. I'm going to maximize this window right now, and I'm going to fast forward right here. It's going to take a little while for it to get the files. Now, once you click enter, you're going to see this. Create a new partition with a C if you want to, or use the unpartitioned space. I'm going to go and create a partition. If you have more storage, you can go and partition it for more. But click enter and format it as NTFS quick. Okay, I'm going to fast forward right here. It's going to copy some files. And now I'm going to... Uh, fast forward right here because it takes a little while. But once this is all done, it's going to restart the computer. So 
who's going to restart the virtual machine. And now you do not want to click anything. Now I'm going to boot from the hard disk, but it's good to leave the ISO in because it's going to copy some files on the go. So now the setup prompt will go on. It's going to fast forward right here. It's still fa fast forwarding. Okay, so now it's going to show up the quick setup. All you need to do is click over to next, put in a name. I'm going to put my name right here real quick. Okay, you can put an organization if you want, but I'm going to click enter. I'm not going to put a password, so click next. Now you want to select your time zone. So this is optional. It doesn't actually matter so much, but I'm going to put my, my time zone. I'm going to fast forward again because this will take a little while. Okay, so now what you need to do is go ahead and uh, do whatever you want here. You can click yes, but if you click now, put in a work group and set this name and click enter. I'm going to fast forward again for some files to copy. I also skipped a little bit because even with fast forwarding the stakes. So now what you're going to see is that it's going to restart again. Do not click anything and do not get the ISO out of the virtual machine. Now it's going to boot. You can see uh, clearly that we got the Windows XP boot logo. So now you're going to click OK. And now it's going to adapt for a screen resolution and you're going to get full screen to your full resolution once we install the drivers. I'm going to show you how to do that at the end. So you're going to wait and now I'm going to stop a little bit the music because it starts onto its setup song. Okay, now it's going to be the quick window setup for a new computer. So you're going to click next. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to click to help. Click next. It's going to check your internet connectivity. And you can clearly see that there is an icon for the dial up connection because it was still supported. Click next. Click no. And click next. Put in your name and create any user you want. I'm going to put my name into this user. Okay. Click next. Click finish. Now the song will stop and you now it's going to boot into Windows XP. Okay, so now we are done. It's just going to adapt some things because it's the first boot. And we are going to install the drivers to our Windows XP machine. You do, do not need to download anything. So wait for it to completely load. Okay. Click over to start and click run. Okay. Click run. So now you're going to type in msconfig. 
because we need to boot into safe mode. So click over to boot.ini and, and now what you need to do is tick the safe boot. Okay, just tick that box, do not modify anything else, click apply, click close and click restart. Now your Windows is going to restart, but now this time when it's going to boot up, it's going to boot into safe mode, okay? So do not press anything, uh, you can actually get the ISO out, but I'm not going to do this, because anyway we're going to be uh, in putting on another device that it's on the optical drive, but it's pre-built into VirtualBox and VMware. You can install VMware tools or just put in now the guest additions disk. Okay, so you're going to select an user, any user. Okay, click yes. And now what you need to do is going to start. But now click insert guest edition CD and then the devices tab. So now what's going to happen is that this setup will come up, click next, click next, tick the direct 3D support and click install. And now just wait for the installation to complete. It's not going to take so long. So just be patient to this. I'm not gonna fast forward or anything. I'm just going to leave it like this. So we're gonna wait for this to install. It's just the drivers for your Windows XP machine. You can clearly see that it's really, really quick. So now you want to click, I want to manually reboot later. And click finish. Now click over to start and click run and type in msconfig because now we want to set the machine so it boots normal every time we boot it. So we're going to untick the safe boot under the boot and click restart. So now every time you boot your virtual machine, it's going to get into normal mode. I'm going to go full screen right now because it's going to automatically adapt to my screen resolution, which is pretty high. So you're going to see that it's still on that resolution, but it's going to take a few seconds and now it's going to automatically adapt because now it recognized our devices. So now let's go into full screen. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time on How Do I Teach.